everybody. Good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. So, um, make sure you guys share this video. <laughs> I'm telling you now, there's a lot of people going through this. Make sure to share this, please. And thank you. Hey, Annette, I hope you're feeling better, babe. Good morning to you. Um, make sure to share this. Share, share, share. Very important, very important. This is vital. This is vital. Peace, Cheryl. Hey, beautiful. Good morning, everybody. Listen, I'm not going to be long, but it's something that I need to talk about this morning. Um, we're going to get started in a minute. Just make sure you hit that share button. Tag your friends. Make sure you tag your friends now. Because there's some people going through this in, in, in silence. There's a lot of people struggling with this very, very, very thing. And I want to make sure. Good morning, Thomas. I want to make sure that um, people get this message. Because I think it's tough. It's very tough when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. So, um, good morning, everybody. Who doesn't know me? I'm Carla Nicole. I'm a wisdom coach. Um, you can check out my my Facebook page. It's Carla Nicole Wisdom Coaching Services. So um, be sure to go over there and like and, and make sure you follow my page. Make sure you check out my YouTube channel. It's called Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. So make sure you go over there too and subscribe, 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 okay? So I'm not going to be long this morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Make sure you guys are doing well. Hey, hey, our Kenny. Share, share, share. Everybody share. Hit your share button because this is important. This is a very important live. Um, I know some people are going through this, so I need you guys to make sure you share this. This this one's going to be very important. So I'm going to tell you what inspired this, this live this morning. I'm a part of a group called Let's Talk About It. Um, a real, a real dope sister that that's doing some powerful things also like i'm doing she she's got a group called let's talk about it if you want check her out she's dope um and <clears throat> she brings up different topics in different relationship situations that's going on so anyway um there was a gentleman <laughs> that tracked 30 days of the nose his woman said to him he has an excel sheet of how many times she said no and her excuses and it struck me because for someone that understands this and this is why i'm more i'm more sensitive to this topic because i understand it's hard for some women but for me i get it because i am someone that has a very high sex drive as well so I get it. I get how that can be frustrating when you're wanting to be intimately touched and you they're not available or you can't do it or we're not they're just not in the mood or they got excuses or whatever what have you. So I wanted to talk about this because I think it's important that we understand that for some people their sex drive is high. Maybe higher than yours and maybe higher than most, okay? So with that said, that is what it is. It's just a part of them. They just have a high drive. They may have, you know, um, it just may just be a part of them. And other people may be, have a, a more suppressed uh, sex drive. They may not have high libido. They may not have a desire sexually and less move to do, do so. And some people have different sexual tastes. Some people are more sapiosexual. They're, they're more intrigued by what you tell them and talk to them about, and then they get aroused. There's other ways to which some people have um, high drives, okay? But this gentleman took his time to chart out every day he did not get sex, every excuse why he did not get sex, and I get it. You know, in my playgirl years, I used to do the same kind of charting. I, listen, I was I was on some other shit. So I was always charting, you know, when I get it, who I got it with, what's going on, how much fun we had, what we did, the positions and all that shit. I was like on some other shit. But anyway, so I get it. I know I know that is a a sometimes a thing that you do 
when you have a high sex drive because you are driven sexually and you desire a lot sexually okay and so where this is hard for someone that doesn't have um a person or partner or someone available to be sexual with when they don't have that it makes it even tougher for them to really manage their sex drive it makes it tough for them to manage when someone is not available it's tough it's not something that it's hard to explain if you don't have a high drive you're not going to relate to this and it's going to be confusing to you like well what's the big deal if you don't get it you don't get it but some people need it <laughs> some people desire it more than others so i'm trying to put y'all up on game with something so a lot of times we get into these relationships with people and i'm sure in the beginning he probably got sex more frequently so there was no reason to excel sheet out how many times she was saying no because for the most part she probably probably was saying yes and he was probably getting it more frequently right so what's hard for him is the day she says no is not necessarily just no because of no sex. I want y'all to get this. This is why I told y'all to share this. Because sex is a part of something that a lot of people aren't understanding. Sex is a sexual thing. It's very joyful and pleasurable. However, sex is also touching, embracing, caressing, feeling, um, showing your mate that you are appreciative of them. It's a lot to sex than just the actual penetration and genital collision. It is not just that. It is a lot around the sex. So the husband, man or husband, whatever he was, or, or boyfriend, whatever he was to this woman, charting out every day he didn't get it was not necessarily about the sex. And I want y'all to get this because I think that sometimes people think that sex is just about the, the penetration. And it's not. It's not. It's about the combine of of souls it's about energy entwining it's about all kinds of ju uh, rejuvenation of spirits let me explain something to you sex is very sacred but sex is also recharging you when you are touched sexually there is a joy you get from it there is a power you have inside you that is brought upon by that mate that you're having sex with so it's not just about the sexual part. So sometimes, and this is to the gentleman, because I know gentlemen think about sex as, man, I like the way she looks, what she does. I like her face. I like her breasts. I like this. I know you guys are visual. So I know you all sit back and think about what she looks like when you're doing your thing. But it's not just about that. It is great to watch. But sometimes y'all need to turn the lights off and just explore each other and not be visual for a change. Try sexing with no lights on. Try sexing in complete and total darkness and learn to now find yourself more amused and moved by her. Not just about what you see. Men, I'm telling y'all this because this is important. It is enjoyable, I know, to see women and their beauty and their body. But sex is more than that for you guys as well. So women, when they are sexual with you men, then they are bringing out you to see yourself in your handsomeness. Women in a sexual, uh, joyful moment with you is supposed to be turning you to look and see yourself. This is the part they don't tell you about sex. They tell you about how good it looks, what her breasts look like, what's her areola look like. Oh my gosh, she made, she did this move on me and this, that's all cool. But it's bigger than that. Sex is bigger than that, people. Stop getting so caught up on just the sex act, act alone. It's bigger than that, okay? So I want y'all to get this. So for those of you that are, are high strung or have a high drive, the truth of the matter is you're really driven by the person and what they're bringing to your spirit. You hear a lot of stuff, you know, because stuff gets trendy. So you hear people talk about how, oh, their soul ties and all this other stuff. And it's true. But outside of that, there is something that the woman is moving in you, gentlemen. That is why you want sex more often with a particular woman. Some women will move you to want to be intimate more frequently because of what she brings to you during the actual sex. It may not just be about how she looks. 
some men are moved by people that they think, well, that's just an average looking chick. She ain't even, why he, why he pick her? She ain't even all that. She brings something to him. She brings something to him. He's drawing to her. There's something about her, right? That is a magnetism. Okay. So we have a magnetism that is, you can't see it. This is why I'm telling men, turn the lights out and get in complete darkness and stop all that visualizing of what you see and start feeling what you feel during sex that's for y'all men put that in your back pocket the next time you making love shut the lights out stop looking at her and start feeling her explore her see what she's about learn her pay attention to what moves her what touches are going to arouse her these are things that they don't teach you okay they just you guys just watched porn so all y'all saw was the jiggling and the boobs moving and all of that and that was oh my god oh that looks hot okay but shut it down learn what sex really is it's the connection okay it's the intimate sacred connection and that my friend is what you desire more than what you're thinking you're desiring yes penetration is great yes having your erect uh, erect you know your eruption and you know i call it eruption because i try to keep it pg if you will your eruption is great it's pleasurable it gives you that high and all of that i get that but it's bigger than that when you have a woman that pulls you into arousal, that means that she's drawing out of you a power. This is why men, you harden. Women, your, your clitoris also hardens. All of this is real shit. This is energy, okay? In that energy, that is what causes you to get more moved, to want to have more sex. And when you have more sex, it's more enjoyable. So, with that said, when you are a person with a high sex drive, Okay. You understand that some people can't keep up with all of that. <laughs> you just, you're a lot. Okay. And this is where, like I said before, we get into a position where we start to be like, well, maybe I need to have more partners or maybe I need to know what you need is you need to get in your purpose. That's what you need to do. Because even when you have a high sex drive, when you're on a mission to get to your purpose, your sex drive takes a back seat because now you're not so focused on being aroused sexually, but now you're focused on being aroused in your spirit. What can I do to make a change in the world on the planet? What can I do to improve my love life and my love life, meaning all of my life? How do I love life? Can I do that? How do I do that? So your purpose can actually basically what it does, what, what, a what, what drawing your purpose means is your purpose is the equalizer in your life to help you manage your high sex drive take that to the bank and cash it when you want all this sex it's not because you're just wanting sex 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 you're wanting connection you're wanting intimacy you're wanting to be touched and felt and and, and appreciated you're wanting to have yourself your nakedness to be approved of by someone else all of these things is a part of sex but outside of that, if you're not in your purpose, your sex is going to hold more precedence and more importance than your purpose. So now you're driven by sex and now you're finding yourself sexually reckless or sexually all over the place. I'm trying to get sex. I'm trying to get sex. I'm trying to get sex. And now all of this sexual desire you're trying to get and seek and find, you're getting a headache now because now your sex is driving you instead of you driving your sex. Does that make sense? Am I making sense, people? Is this making sense to everybody? Because I know I'm, I'm putting purpose in sex, and that's not something y'all want to hear. That ain't sexy, see? When I said sex, y'all was in. But when I talked about purpose, I'm sure people are going to start falling off. Because that's not as sexy, but it is. Your purpose is your sexual, is what is your equal equalizer for your sex. And in your purpose. So when you are purposeful, you're not as driven to be sexual because you're driven to be in your purpose see what i'm saying and again like i tell you all the time sex is a beautiful thing but sex that you find yourself so driven on wanting so much it's because you're wanting the connection you're wanting the touch you're wanting the appreciation and you're wanting to have some type of time where you can just explore your lover your partner or whatever okay this man keeping a track of his woman saying no that many times now mind you i'm gonna put you up on game or something as well this woman said no to him 20 about 26 times out the month 
And I think she only said yes three times. That tells me that either one, she's really not a sexual being and doesn't require that much sex for herself. Or two, she's not feeling moved by him to want to be sexual. Sex is something that you get aroused to do because you're moved by the person you want to be sexual with. When we want sex, there's a person in mind we want to desire to have it with. And it may be a fantasy. It may be somebody that we can't attain. But whatever that is, you're aroused to that person. The arousal means I'm moved. I feel. I, I, I want to touch them. I want to feel in a sacred space with them. I want a private I want a private time with them because I can be myself. I can be more honest in me. I can, I can show them my authentic being without feeling judged. All of this comes with wanting to desire someone to be in that sacred space. Am I, am I making sense? Make sure y'all share this and make sure you tag people that need to hear this because some women or men might feel like, man, I'm over the top. My sex drives off the charts. No, it's just you. It's just you. And I, I, I beg to differ, Brandon. There are some married couples that get it in a lot. <laughs> a lot. And have wonderful sex together. He just might, this person may just have a scenario with the wrong type of partner. See, it also comes down to understanding your sexual truth. You got to be honest with you. Are you a sexual person? How often do you want to be intimate? All of this stuff you need to be asking yourself before you get involved with someone. Does that make sense? You got to ask yourself, well, what do I need sexually? A lot of people get in relationships and they don't know what they need sexually. Do you know how many people come to me sexless in a sexless marriage or sexless, sexless partnership or sexless arrangement they're in? Do you know how many people come to me about this? How frustrated they are? How at the brink they are to cheat or at the brink to break up because they're so frustrated sexually. It's common. It's more common than not. Some are married, some are not. Some are just frustrated sexually because they're not being honest with self. You got to tell yourself the truth. Damn about somebody else. Be honest with you. What do you need sexually? What do you really need? I'm talking about need now. I'm not talking about want. What do you actually need to feel like you're because see let me tell you something about sex too sex good morning keith sex brings you um confidence it brings you um self-awareness sex brings you to yourself see and a lot of times we with these selfish lovers that only care about what they're getting but that's where they're sexing you wrong they're supposed to be caring about what you're getting and you're supposed to do the same and in the selflessness of sex, you will become aroused and more enjoyed with the sex while you're with them. Is that making sense? Am I making sense, people? Because I'm just saying. A lot of people are in sexless relationships and they don't feel happy with what they have going on. But we've got to be honest. I had a married gentleman reach out to me not too long ago. And he was saying that, um, you know, he's not being moved sexually with his with his with his partner and i said well um what's your ideal time of having sex a month see with with, with men i i can give it to them raw because men like men men like y'all like the numbers y'all like the numbers so i can give men numbers and be like hey so how many times a week you want it he said three I said okay so you want it 12 times a month he was like whoa 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 that ain't enough so you you're basing it off of what you heard. What do you need sexually? And if you're not sure, you need to see how many times you need to self-please or how you, how often you're masturbating, how often you're, you're needing sex, sex, your sex drive is driven to want to be intimate. This is all physiological. This ain't got shit to do with emotions. This has everything to do with what your body calling for. Because when we're aroused and we want to be intimate, our body is calling for it. It's asking for it. Hey, you're, we're low on this right here. We need some intimacy. Our 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 our, our sexual bank is low. We in oh we're overdraft here. <laughs> some is like in the negative. So if they're in the negative, why are you in the negative? Oh, my sexual bank is low, man. I, I ain't got it. I'm I'm not getting sex. Okay. Well, then you need to fix that. 
And you can, but what do you need to do to do that? You need to conversate. You need to have uncomfortable conversations. I tell y'all all the time how important it is to have uncomfortable conversations with your lover, honey. You need to tell them our sexual bank account is in the negative. I have, we haven't had a deposit for a while now. It's been about 20, 30 days. And in this deficit here, I'm, I'm feeling depleted because what I tell people all the time is power couples have a lot of sex. They do. They have a lot of sex and it's not by accident. They have a lot of sex because they are, they are enjoying each other sexually. And in that enjoyment brings a power in both of them. So the woman brings him to want to be the best type of man he is. And the woman brings and, and the uh, man brings to the woman to want to be the best version of herself. If you're with the right sexual partner. Okay. Let's talk about that. You can be with a partner that doesn't move you. They might feel good. They might do the right thing and all of that. But they don't move you to be a better version of you. That is not the one you need to be solidifying and moving in with and making and making your main or making your wife or whatever you want to call it whatever arrangement you in making her one of your uh, uh team wives or whatever y'all doing you're bringing in a woman that just sexually feels good but she's not moving you to want to be the best man you are or, or should be or should become should be attempting to 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 become so if you don't have a man or if you don't have a woman moving you to be the best version of yourself, then you're not with your, you're not with your, uh, with the right match here. And this is where we go wrong because we're looking at, well, is this woman going to, is she going to be faithful to me? Is this woman going to take care of me? Can this woman cook? Y'all basing shit off of sex with what she can do. Can she keep a clean house? Is she a good mom? All that has nothing to do with you sexually. Nothing. Not a hill of beans. So you can get a great mom, a great cook, and a great housekeeper, and she will suck in bed. And now you're like, well, damn, I picked her thinking she was going to be the one for me, and damn it, she ain't even adding up. No, because you looked for things about her as far as her personality and being a mom in her mom role and how she is as a housekeeper and what she does for cooking and, and being a chef for you. But you didn't think about well, what she going to bring to the table when it comes down to when your sex account is low, that she going, is she going to kick some action in there or not? <laughs> I mean, y'all think y'all and men, I don't know if y'all got this from somewhere, but just because a woman can cook and clean and all that, don't make her a good, perfect sexual match for you. Man, that's why you have to look at what happens. What is the aftermath after the sex? What is it? What is the aftermath after sex for you and your soul and your spirit? After you get make love to this woman, how do you feel as a man on the inside? There should be a residue left in your spirit because you had sex with this woman. There should be something after that that empowers you. You should be a driven man. Have you ever seen a man with a, with a woman that makes him, man, please. This man is like, oh my God, I got the best, baddest ass chick out here. You can, ch he'll change his whole shit. He's like, okay, I got to get on my drive. I got to get on my A game to keep this woman right here. Not for her, but for himself. Because she brings out of him an empower, an empowerment. She brings out of him the best version of himself. So he's like, shit, my girl bad. I don't care what y'all saying. She bad. And matter of fact, because of her, I'm going to be a better man. That means you got the right partner, sexual partner match. She right for you. Because now not only, even if she's a little short on some of the other things you're thinking about, like cooking and cleaning and all that. Y'all compromise that shit. But guess what? In the bedroom at night or during the day when you at work and you want you want to get it in and you're wanting to, hey, baby girl, come over here to the parking lot. Let's have some action. She's on you. And you're like, oh, damn, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, but you didn't base it off of the, did she cook clean and it's a good mom. <laughs> you focused on what well, she actually brings the, out of me being the best man. Trying to give it to y'all raw, man. It's early in the morning. I'm, I'm awake this morning. <laughs> I'm very awake this morning. And I'm trying to get y'all awake to understand. Listen, 
If that woman ain't charging you to want to be the better man, you ain't with the right partner. Sexually. A woman that is on you, making love to you, okay, should be making you feel like the man at the top of the world. If she's not, she's okay to kick it with. She's okay to mingle with sex all the time or whatever. She ain't somebody to partner with. Take that to the bank. Sex and purpose go hand in hand. Hands down. Sex, I'm going to say it again. Sex and purpose go hand to hand. Have good sex and see what you do with it. Have good sex with your best sexual partner and your best sexual match because they make you feel amazing and you want to be driven to do the best of you. That person is a match for you. Whether they look what you're, well, they're not tall enough, or they don't make enough money, or they don't cook like I like them to, or they just, they that you want to, you want to, you want to bicker about that shit. But let me tell you something, because of that man in your life, or that woman in your life, you are now a better man. You better get on your A game and understand everybody isn't going to be to your liking of everything that you want and desire. Just what it is. Man, listen, I'm giving y'all some truths lately. <laughs> so y'all need to be sharing this and tagging people. That's what y'all need to do. Share, share, and share, and tag. Because at the end of the day, somebody needs to hear this. Sex is what it is, but sex and purpose go hand to hand. When you are in your purpose and you have a great sexual partner holding you up and looking out for you and has your back, encouraging you, giving you words of wis wisdom and stuff like that, that person is somebody that can drive you to the better version of you. Just by being intimate with them. Just by being intimate with them. So understand that. There is a power. Good morning, Angela. There is a power within the confines of your sacred se sexual agreement that you have with your lover. There is a power in it. The power is what you guys see when you want to say somebody's a power couple. Well, you a power? Oh, they a power couple. They're a power couple. Okay, power couples are great, but understand they're having a lot of sex. And understand in their sex and in their wonderful arrangement here, that woman wants to be a better woman because of him. He wants to be a better woman because of her. And they're driven in their purpose more because they pull that magnetism into driving to become the better self, the, their better selves. Is that making sense? So it all comes back down to self-loving. Comes down to self-loving. If you love you and the man or woman matches it, guess what? You're going to have an empowered sexual arrangement. The relationship is going to be more empowered. Even if they're of, of shortcomings. Like I said, men, y'all pay basing... If she's a good mom, if she's good with cooking and all that, y'all basing, basing it off of that. And that has nothing, that's not a hill of beans to do with what kind of lover she's going to be to you. What's her sex bringing you? Think about that. Is her sex bringing you something more than just pleasure? How about that? Try that on for size. Is she bringing you more than just pleasure? Pleasure Principle. Remember that by Janet Jackson? I was thinking about that song today. Ooh, it's Pleasure Principle. Anyway, pleasure is okay. It's good. It feels good. It's lovely. I love it. I love to be in it. But stop. What else is she bringing you? Is she making sure you're good? Does she protect you from yourself sometimes? Does she protect you from outsiders that may be lurking to try to destroy what you're trying to build? Does she look out for you? Are you a better man because of her? You better be thinking about that before you be thinking about how she cooks. Because y'all can, y'all, if you, if you're in your purpose and you're driven to do the best you can do and, 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 and on your mission, you can afford to buy for somebody to pay or you can, you can afford a chef to come in and cook for you if she falls short there. Oh, and don't get me started. She can't clean too good. It's okay. You can afford to get a, 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 a housekeeper. It's okay. Because if you're in your purpose and this woman is driving you into being the best version of yourself, nothing's going to stop you from wanting to keep that woman in your life. So, like I said, 
Sex is not always about purpose. I mean, not, not always about pleasure, but it's also about purpose. So when you mingle with the right woman, when you tie in and, and become intimate with the right sexual match, you will find yourself more driven in yourself, in your purpose, and in what you're trying to create. This is why I tell people all the time, stop getting so hung up on how good the man makes love to you. Stop getting all caught up on how good she does the backflips for you and swings off of chandeliers and stuff. Stop getting all caught up about what you see visually because that can get you all caught up in finding yourself in a woman that, that is not for you. She's doing everything against you. See what you feel, man. Y'all drive by, by what you see. So, so do it in the dark. That's for you, gents. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate you, babe. Do it in the dark, gents. Turn the lights out. I want all the men on here next time you making love to this woman to turn the lights out and see what you feel. Stop basing it off of what you see. And ladies, if you're in an intimate arrangement with men, I need you ladies to stop thinking about what you feel and start paying attention to what you see. Is he really there engaged with you sexually or is he just there to get what you're coming to give him? Because we base everything off of what we feel. I feel this. I feel that. Okay, well, don't feel. Start looking. What's he doing? Is he just laying there? You doing all the work? Listen. Happy doesn't cost a thing. I want y'all to get this, people. Understand it gets to a point where we got to sit back and step back and pay attention to what is good for us in our love lives. And we have to understand that we, Marley, just a minute. Um, we have to understand that a lot of times we're all caught up in what a person is bringing, not realizing that sex is the same as purpose. It all also will bring you closer to your purpose if you're making love to your, to your right partner sexual match. Again, I'm going to re just give you some more raw truths. Understand, if you're constantly saying no to someone or someone is constantly saying no to you, it's because they're not driving you to be in that intimate uh, uh, space. They don't want you like that. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? You're going to stay in this sexless relationship and keep Excel sheets of how many times she says no or not? Or are you going to sit down and have an uncomfortable conversation and say, hey, this ain't working. I'm feeling, I'm feeling unwanted. And I found out that when I coach men, I found out men really take this shit personal. So ladies, if you really loving a man and you really love him and care about him, saying no a lot, it, it, it hurt, it hurts them to their core more than y'all realize. And again, it's not always about the genital collision. A lot of times it's about what you bring to that man. He feels cared for and appreciated when you're intimate. So it's not just about the pounding, people. I know y'all think, oh, yeah, I'm going to get it now. That's the... <laughs> Listen, it's not always just about the pounding. Maybe it's about the slow love making. Maybe it's about the holding and touching and caressing. Maybe it's just about the kissing. It's a lot of things to sex besides just that. But we don't, we don't sit down and really give ourselves time to be honest about what it is. I want all y'all ladies, I want all y'all ladies, this is for the ladies assignment. Ladies, I want you guys to journal what sex brings to you. And we can have a conversation, ladies, in private about that. Gentlemen, I want you guys just to, like I said, make love in the dark. Shut the lights out. I want you guys using a different... I want you to use a different sense rather than your visual sense during sex. Because this is going to take you to another level with the person you're with. So you can start to see with your soul rather than see with your your eyes what she's bringing to you sexually am i making this clear you know i'm the coach so i get to tell y'all what's best for y'all so try this on i want we'll, we'll probably meet again i want y'all to talk to me about what you found out when you made love in the dark what'd you find out and, and like i said what's the residue for men what's the residue after sex what do you, what are you feeling after sex with this woman is she making you feel more like a, a, a the man at the top of the world? If she is, then you better hold on to her. And if she's falls short on other stuff like cooking and cleaning, think about it. 
she can pull you into your purpose cooking and cleaning ain't gonna be the issue because you guys are gonna be having a lot of sex and probably a lot of takeout is going to be happening anyway so who cares if she can cook or not I'm just, listen i'm just trying to i'm trying to just go in here and kill all of the so-called um cliches and stuff we're always thinking well if a woman can cook and clean she's the man she's she's great for sex and and no and this is why a lot of men and a lot of people come into me with a high drive but sexually deprived and i have to tell them well you did not pick a pr the proper match because you were not aware of your sexual truth and this is why because you're not in your sexual truth you don't really know what you need sexually Men, shut the lights out. Like I said, turn them lights off. Y'all men love to have sex in the daylight or you love to look and see what you're looking at and all that, but I want y'all to change your senses for a minute. And I want you guys to look at the woman from your soul rather than looking at the woman with your eyes. Women, like I said, I need you guys to start paying attention and look. Y'all don't look. Y'all just doing your thing, but you're not paying attention. Is this man engaged with you or not? Pay attention to what he's doing while you are making love to him. A lot of women just are in there having a good time and she's thinking, oh, he's all about me and he ain't even there. He over in his mind with somebody else. This, this is why we women get played. I'm just saying. Y'all make sure to share this video. I'm going back to work now. I've been talking enough. Share this video. Pay attention to what I said. And heed that your sex with your partner that you pick and that you're with can either push you into a greater purpose or can keep you where you're at which is either not where you want to be or not so think about that all right i'm out of here guys make sure you share this video tag the tag your friends let your friends know hey get over here and pay attention because this is some real shit. this is what it really is when you got a high sex drive it's not just for sex sometimes it's for encouragement sometimes it's for appreciation sex is more than what y'all thinking it's a bigger it's a bigger picture than what y'all think okay i love you guys make sure to share the video make sure to go over and look at my youtube channel carla nicole wisdom channel make sure to do that and uh i'll be back again you already know it's carla nicole i'm signing off best kept <laughs>